Hello again, and welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. My name is Justin Hewn. I am your host and the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. Thank you for tuning in. I've been, I've been away out of the office for a few days, been traveling, visiting family. It's good to be back. So much can happen in a few days in this market, and can it be any other way for uranium? Um, before we get into it, nothing in this video is intended to be investing advice. I'm not your financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. Please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing, and always take responsibility for your own choices. With that said, um, let's jump right into the daily scoreboard. I'm going to give you some the, the daily price, the spot price of uranium, and also give you some week-to-date numbers since I've been out uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week. Today is Thursday, October 21st. Um, the spot price of uranium currently is sitting at uh, 47.50 per pound mid market. It looks like it's slowly consolidating, moving up slightly after a big move off of the bottom of that previous um, correction, of around $37 a pound. Jumped jumped up about $10 a pound in short order after selling off from that previous high in September, $52 a pound. Um, so far, so good. Um, this week, so far, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, also known as SPUT has taken in 83.8 million in fresh capital, purchased another 1.55 million pounds of, of U308, um, ended the day yesterday with 52.6 million in cash in the treasury to buy more pounds of uranium, and closed the day yesterday at a 2.7% premium to their net asset value. Remember, they have to have at least a 1% premium to NAV, in order to issue shares into the market to raise capital. So it's likely they're there again today. They're willing to uh, be up to 50 to 60% of the daily trading volume on days when they are above that 1% premium to NAV. I'm gonna share a couple of charts here uh, pertaining to the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. Starting off, this, this chart is showing the uh, overall move in the spot price of uranium along with the cumulative number of pounds that SPUT has purchased. Starting off, uh, the bottom left of the screen is the beginning of their ATM, August 17th. And obviously, the upper right is today. As you can see, they've accumulated over 15 million pounds. It's just under 15.9 million pounds, actually. And the spot price is, for the most part, follow following this trend of accumulation. We're seeing this sort of sinusoidal wave up and down of the spot price, higher, high, higher, low. In my opinion, we are in the you know midway in the next move to that higher high, which should breach that $52 a pound. Um, this graph is showing the unit price or the share price of the trust versus the spot price. You can see that they are tracking very closely. The Sprott Physical Uranium Trust is a fantastic vehicle for investors to have exposure to the commodity without taking on that individual mining risk. Lastly, looking at the uh, unit price versus the net asset value and the premium and or discount to the net asset value. So far, since August 17th, SPUT has traded at a discount to NAV only six days since August 17th. So for the past two plus months, there's only been six trading days where they've been at a discount. Why is that? Well, investors clearly are seeing that Sprott is doing exactly what they stated they would be doing. As long as they are at that 1% premium to NAV, they have been in the market issuing shares, uh, raising cash, buying physical uranium. Therefore, whenever this vehicle presents a discount to NAV, it's an opportunity for investors to arb it off, play some arbitrage based on the discount to NAV. They can come in at 3% discount to NAV, sell it at that 3% uh, premium to NAV and make a quick 6%. If you're trading in large amounts of money, that's a nice little quick win. So what we've seen is for the most part, this vehicle has been trading at a premium to NAV. And uh, that's exactly how uh, this, this is going to be going forward, in my opinion. Will we see large periods of time where this is trading at a discount to NAV? In my opinion, we will not, at least during the bull market. Investors know at this point their money going into this equals pounds accumulated, and uh, and and helping this vehicle to get back above that pre that discount to NAV if it's trading at a discount to NAV, which so far it has not been doing so for a very long period of time. So since August seventeenth, the start of their first ATM, 
Sput has raised $735.5 million, just huge money coming into the sector via this vehicle alone. And as you'll see in just a second, the, the ETFs are doing just the same. Um, URA reported week to date, so Monday through Wednesday of this week so far, week to date, they've reported a substantial 3.8 million increase in outstanding shares. URNM has reported an increase of 125,000 shares over the first three days of this week. What that means is that during those first three days of this week, they, uh, there's mandated buying of their underlying holdings, URA to the tune of 76.9 million, URNM 12.1 million. Now that purchasing has already happened, right? That happens almost in real time for the most part because reporting these increased increases or, or, or um, redemptions in shares, it lags by a couple of days. Either way, that will explain the big moves we saw Monday and Tuesday, which we'll see in the charts uh, briefly here. The AUMs for the two ETFs are up significantly since the September month end. URA now at 1.38 billion, URNM now at 920 million. Combined, these two sit at an AUM of over 2.3 billion. Basically, month to date, the in increase in AUM of the two ETFs combined is $814.2 million just over three weeks. Astounding. Now, the AUM, of course, is not only the new capital that, these, that they've raised from um, issuing new shares into the market, but also from the increase in the stock price. So that's just a huge, huge increase. Um, the AUMs of the combined ETFs now is 11x what it was in March of 2020, 19 months ago. Huge moves in the sector, and we're continuing to see that. Let's take a look at the charts. Starting off as we usually do with URA, um, URA had some really big moves last week, uh, slight pullback towards the end of the week, and then some other big moves moving up again Monday, Tuesday. Now, this is exactly what we want to see here, folks. We want to see when the, when, the, when the unit, when the trust is moving up, we want to see the volume increasing. When the trust is moving down, we want to see it decreasing. Precisely what we're seeing, big volumes on the up days, declining volume on the down days. What does this mean? This means institutions and larger capital is coming in, moving this up, and retail is selling it off. That's an oversimplification, but that's essentially what we're looking at here. URNM, pretty similar looking chart, right? Um, big volume on the way up, declining volume on the, way on the way down. Big volume on the way up, declining on the way down. This looks to me like URA and URNM are making somewhat of a bull flag type situation maybe a, a rising channel. We're gonna see a consolidation here. We could see this pull back down a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if it pulls back another 5% perhaps. And then I think we'll resume this um, seasonal trend that I'm expecting should be strong for the next couple of months here at least. Let's take a look at the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. We saw again, really big volumes and they raised a lot of money. This was the day I believe they raised over $90 million. Uh, just, just absolutely huge. Uh, like I mentioned, this is pretty closely tracking that spot price of uranium. This is right when we were around that $52 a pound, dropped back down to $37 a pound. Now we're up to $47 a pound, sticking close to NAV. Uh, volumes are decreasing a little bit here. I'd like to see those increase again. Um, I think that we'll see that if we get down to below um, into a discount to NAV, we should see some volumes come in. And I think that we're going to wait um, until the equities in the space consolidate a bit here. Maybe retail will sell them down a bit more. We're seeing a little bit of selling today. And then we'll see that big money come back and continue to reposition. Cameco, very strong chart. Very, very strong chart. Um, happy to see this. Look at all three short-term and long-term moving averages are all moving up strongly. Uh, decent down day today, pulled back right to some previous resistance. Let's see if that holds. If not, I wouldn't expect it to go down to or much through the 20 day if we have a bigger pullback. Seems like the overall um, energy space today is, is having a, a bit of a breather, oil and gas, uh, coal, et cetera, all kind of taking a rest here. So let's um, take a look at the uh, mailbag really quickly here. Justin, what is this I hear about the world's largest producer, because Adam Prom creating a vehicle like Sput? So yeah, that's essentially what has happened. This was announced, I believe it was on, on uh, Saturday. Because uh, Adam Prom is seed investing a new entity called ANU Energy. Um, the, the first seed of, of investment capital is going to be $50 million. 
Uh, about half of that is coming from Kazatomprom. The other half is coming from the National Bank of Kazakhstan with a small percentage coming from the, uh, the, the deal makers here. 50 million in new capital to acquire physical uranium. So they are uh, stepping up to the plate and the next plan once this is established is to, is to do a follow on raise of $500 million. So basically what we're seeing here is because Adam Prom is taking a strategic move here to have an active role in creating this, uh, this physical trust of physical uranium. Um, this is, in my opinion, a growing story here. And what we're talking about, in my opinion, is um, not only this is not just a play on trying to accumulate uranium currently expecting higher prices to sell it back in the market. This is an overall larger situation here having to do with energy security. And this, this is the same thing that we saw with, um, with China and Kazatomprom setting up a, uh, a stockpiling warehouse for uranium on the border, um, on the Chinese border. This is nation states, this is companies, this is um, uh, utilities even, are likely gonna be joining this ball game in securing fuel going out into the future. We're having big energy crises all over the world currently. And it's never been more clear that uranium is and nuclear energy is a viable, uh, clear option for baseload energy that can run in, in inclement weather. Uh, the, the nuclear fuel for nuclear energy is so concentrated, it can be stored in a very small space. This is a theme that we are gonna see uh, increasingly going out into the future. And in my opinion, this is a hugely bullish move and is a hugely bullish signal to the market that the largest producer in the world that does have a trading arm, uh, THK, Trading House Kazatomprom, they do sell into the spot market. They're not huge sellers, but they sell a bit. Um, Kazatomprom is unlikely to be a major seller into the spot mar market now that they are um, putting capital into actually acquiring and holding physical uranium. This is also uh, a play to reach uh, investors in the East to have exposure to the to the uranium commodity, we've got plenty of options in the West. We've got the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust um, uh, in in Britain. The Yellow Cake PLC is a physical uranium trust. Um, so now we'll have this option in the East, and this is this is hugely bullish for the uranium commodity and for the sector as a whole. Um, I, I think that this is really setting up. You know, for the longest time we've had the thesis uh, based on mostly a supply and demand dynamic that we saw a disjunct there. We saw the future potential for um, that, that, uh, that supply and, 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 and supply and demand disjunct to create some uh, accretive influence on the price of the commodity, right? That was kind of the overall thesis and that the utilities would come back to the market, they'd secure long-term contracts, et cetera, et cetera. This is now setting up to be a uranium super cycle, in my opinion. We could see some serious um, serious new players coming into the market fighting for these pounds. And, and there's a limited supply, you guys. There's, we're seeing 125, maybe 130 million pounds produced this year, 180 to 185 million consumed by the reactors, by the actual physical nuclear reactors globally. So we have a 60 million pound, close to 60 million pound deficit in supply in a single year. This is not to mention the physical trusts that are sucking up pounds. The Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, 16 million pounds in two months, okay? This is not even talking about all of the other players that have bought Spot Uranium this year or they're securing pounds. Um, I think that we're on the verge of a very, very strong cycle for Uranium that's going to last a while. Now, can those physical trusts move the spot price quicker? than we were expecting prior. Yes, they can. And it's it's likely that that is going to happen. This could be a short, you know, 12 to 24 month type of move to see a price spike. But the super cycle in the commodity, in my opinion, is going to last much, much longer than the potential for a shorter term uranium spot price spike. Um, I want to just end this by mentioning uh, Tuesday, two days ago, we had our third members only webinar. We had a um, uh, the Sprott CEO, John Chimpagli, as a special guest. It was amazing. It was a really excellent discussion. If you are a member of Uranium Insider Pro, the replay of that webinar is up on our website, on the members area of the website, right at the top. You can stream it live from the website. 
If you're not a member and you're interested in joining and you would like a sample of our of a previous month's newsletter, you get an idea of the type of content that we put out, um, please send us an email, support at uraniuminsider.com. We don't want anybody to miss out on this opportunity. This is a huge, huge development. Um, referring to Kazadam Prom now uh, going after physical uh, physical pounds for hoarding this trust. Um, I do believe we are really on the verge of a huge move. We've already had big moves, but I think the biggest moves are still set to come. Um, our our focus list list of, of of positions. We currently have nine positions in uh, in the uranium sector. They're performing extremely well. Um, we would love to have you on board. If you have any questions or you want to get that sample newsletter, hit me up. Send an email, support at uraniuminsider.com. Uh, as always, like if you if you appreciate this content, like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when, whenever we put out new content, which is almost every day. I will be here tomorrow. Uh, I should be here most, if not all of next week. So I, I appreciate you all being here. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk again on Uranium and uh, try to help you understand a little bit more about what's going on in this market hang on during volatile times and make some money, help yourself, your family, your community out. Um, thank you for being here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.